enjoy Tornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the podcast, share it with a friend. It really helps us out. And today, I've got a great show lined up for you. Uh, I've got a good guest on the show, one that's obviously been around uh, for a while here at Hornady. He's been on the show before, does a lot behind the scenes, and this is a, a, a big day because we've got a new development that's available in Hornady Fordoff. And Hornady Fordoff, we've talked about it. It's, it's just been a fun project to work on, and it is singularly the best ballistic calculator on the market. So uh, part of the ballistic development group, uh, a ballistician here at Hornady, Jacob Morrow. Jacob, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So like I, I rambled on there, pretty excited about this. You know, Hornady has developed the Ford off uh, largely with the help of uh, Jaden Quinlan. Uh, and uh, his series of podcasts, Quinlan's Corner, had nothing to do with developing Ford off, but getting a good word out there. And there's a team that we have internally, we've talked about the Ballistic Development oh, yeah. Group, and you know that's the Research and Development Committee, I guess you could call them. And they develop a lot of stuff, new bullets, new cartridges, new whatever. Well, Hornady Ford off is free of charge for the most part. There's some in-app purchases that you can make, but the use of our drag coefficient-based trajectories are free of charge. And so that doesn't necessarily get looked at, I think, on the consumer level for the tool that it really is. Well, we take it very serious. And with your history and experience with the Doppler radar and being part of that ballistic development group, you've put a ton of bullets and a ton of work just into Ford Off. But if you've gone, uh, if the users listening have gone on to Ford Off recently within the last year and saw a new bullet, that's because you shot it sectioned it, modeled it, and made it happen in Ford Off. Yep. In fact, I think I added, uh, I think it was 16 new bullets to it just a month or two ago. So yeah. like it's expanding every day. We've got a, a big pile of bolts that I've got to section and measure and shoot on radar to, to continue adding to it. Yeah. Well, and you know, this is a good point to, to tell the listeners, thank you guys, you know, uh, on Quinlan's Corner and a few other uh, venues we've mentioned, if you've got a bullet and you want it to be in Ford off and it's not, it could be that there's a reason it's not. For example, if it's got a polymer tip that has a low melt point, it will deform in flight. We can't put those in Ford off. However, there are some that are applicable that we just haven't found on the market or we haven't bought them yet or whatever. And we've had a bunch of listeners send bullets to the factory and you've spooled them up and put them in there. Yeah, I think there was a, a three gentlemen that sent some in and I, I added those in the last batch. I've got I think two that were customer requests that they sent some in that are waiting on the, the queue as well. Awesome. Well, that's, that's great. And it helps us, but it helps everybody. It helps everybody oh, yeah. that's wanting to use Ford off and it helps everybody that wants to hit something far away. And I think for me, the beauty of Ford off and, and using it at its infancy was just by switching to a different calculator style. I was hitting what I was aiming at more often oh, and yeah. on the first shot more yep. often. And I mean, that's proof in the pudding. That's oh, yeah. worth its weight in gold. And uh, like I said, it's a free of charge app. There are some in-app purchases, but we're always trying to make this better, right? We're always trying to make, and I say this, I don't mean just for it off. I mean, what we do, bullets, yeah. ammo. Yeah, absolutely. And so in that pursuit, you and Jaden analyzed and continue to analyze Groups upon groups, I mean, stuff, numbers that would make your most people's mind boggle, right? So in that develop or in that uh, analysis of these groups and you're doing these large, you know, tests, you found some areas where it's like, man, it'd be really convenient if we had a group analysis calculator, for lack of a better term. Yep. And so with you, with Jaden, with our app developer, with a bunch of people internally, it has now come to fruition. Ford off has available a group analysis calculator. I want to talk to you about, I want to hear how it got started. What were some of the initial features of what it was really designed to do, how you use it and how you can, as an end user, use the target analysis feature to set up your zero angle. Yep. 
And man, we talked about that in uh, one of uh, one of our Ford Off podcasts about how powerful using zero angle is in Ford Off and what it what it provides you. And uh, this this integrates so well into that whole procedure. So let's go back to the beginning. You and Jaden and a few others, obviously Miles, uh, yeah. slogging out 30, 50, 100 shot groups, and you have to analyze all this stuff. Where did this all get started? So it kind of got started with us just going through all these groups. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of groups. We got five shot, three shot, 10 shot, 20 shot groups. Just we, you name it, we shot it. We even had some 100 and 500 group, uh, group tests as well. And we were all manually measuring out how high and how, you know, left and right every shot went and we put it into Excel and that's just super time consuming. We we basically would take an entire day of testing and then another three or four days just going through all of the data. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of like, man, there's got to be some ways to, to make this easier on us because we're learning some really cool stuff. But if we could spend more time testing and less time analyzing all the or not reducing. necessarily an, analyzing, but yeah, yeah, reducing all that data and putting it into a usable format, mm-hmm. that'd save tons of time for us. And just, we'd get these results so much faster. So at the time that we were kind of thinking of how we can make this easier for us, we, uh, we started adding into Ford off on the beta side, a, a way to set your zero angle. So some of the work was kind of started there. The, the idea was basically, I want to take a picture of, of your target and go, I aimed here, these are where the shots are at, and the, it calculates your zero angle for us. Mm-hmm. So we figured, well, you know, let's take that a little bit farther and make this do group metrics and be able to use this independently of setting zero angle so it's more of a, a tool for group analysis and setting zero angle, not just setting zero angle. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where it came from. And there's some other, other products on the market that do similar things, but we, we specifically wanted this to be able to do stuff like mean radius. That was talked about on the, uh, what was it? The groups too small podcast. Yeah. Your groups are too small. Yeah. The podcast that set the internet on fire for a <laughs> short time. Yeah. So a, a lot of the data that was in, in the uh, groups too small podcast came from us in the middle of working on this stuff. So this is when group analysis was in beta and we're, you know, getting everything figured out with the developers, getting it to work and stuff like that. So it wasn't fully functional, but we started using it a little bit there okay. and it, it totally does cut time down on that. But we wanted to be able to make something that the end user could use too. So like who cares if Jaden and I can use it to do a 500 shot group if nobody else gets to use it, right? Right. We want to make something that everybody can benefit from. Perfect. Well, that, that that's exactly what the cornerstone of Hornady seems to be is innovation. You know, we get that all the time. Like, oh my gosh, it seems like every year or every other year, you guys just have a home run product. Well, it's because we're passionate end users. I've said oh, it a yeah. hundred times. and is all like this is a prime example. This cool feature, which makes Ford off just that much more beneficial on the zero angle side, but it's also super beneficial on like low development and yeah. analyzing those groups. It all stemmed from, I'm an end user. I want these features. How do I make something I want to use yeah. that's going to benefit the shooting community as a whole? Uh, so that's, that's pretty awesome. And you mentioned some similar apps out there, or at least one that's really popular that yep. does this. And we've all used that. So, um, Let's transition now from, okay, that's what it is yep. uh, or how it got here. Let's talk about what it actually does uh, and then how that integrates into just a raw group on a piece of paper to how we use that in Ford Off. And for those listening, now's a good time to also mention we have a iPad, uh, an iPad rather, uh, that is mirrored to the screen. So if you're listening only, we'll do our best to describe it for the listener. Um, but we will have visual aids on this one. You can watch Jacob step by step analyze groups on paper and then set up Ford off with it. So yeah. uh, for the for the listener, um, you might want to jump on the YouTubes and and check this one out. Yeah, absolutely. There will be some definite uh, beneficial beneficial aids of of viewing this instead of just listening. Okay. So I'll just dive right in and kind of go over how to use it right now. That's awesome. All right. So we're on our home screen for Ford off. You'll see down, scroll down a little bit, there's a new banner there. It says group analysis. So that's where this is at. And if you click it, if you haven't purchased it yet, it's uh, $4.99, I believe. $4.99. Yep. So you're going to get this screen that pretty much has nothing. It's your first time using it. Up at the top, there's a little plus, same as pretty much every other app. Yep. You're going to get a screen that says take a photo. So here's kind of a neat part. You don't have to take a photo with it. You can 
pick a photo from your library. So if you've already taken a photo on your phone, say you were out at the range and you didn't have time to go through it all and you just snapped a picture of your group, you can do it later. Okay, awesome. Or you can take the picture live right in front yep. of it. Yep, okay. and that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to hit select photo, give it the permissions to take a photo. There's a little grid here that helps you take a nice square photo if you, like uh, our targets happen to have a grid, so it makes it pretty helpful if you don't have a grid just try to take it as square as possible okay and i mean that both in the tilted direction and with your ipad you want it parallel to the surface yep as best you can yep so what that's going to do if you have it tilted all the everything that's up where it's farther away is going to be a different distance than when it's close so that's why you want to make sure it's par parallel and square that's going to get your 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 most accurate measurements so i'm going to do the best i can here so that one looks, uh, it looks pretty square. We do yep. have a tool at the bottom. Uh, it says rotate photo at the top. You can, it'll oh, you go can... in half degree measurements. Oh, perfect. So, so if, you, you, take if it... you take it a little crooked, no big deal. We can square that up in the app. Perfect. Oop. So we'll just, that looks pretty good there. Yep. And then uh, it's going to ask you to crop the photo. If you took a big photo, you can make it a little smaller. If you got plenty of room, you know, that's totally up to you. That looks pretty good there. Okay. So here we got a little thing that says, if you got any questions, hit the, the question mark for group analysis. So here is kind of the, the basic area. You got a banner at the top. You can name this. Okay, that'll be handy. So if you want to analyze several groups for the same rifle. Yep. Okay. And, and what happens when we're done with this, when we save it, it'll save to kind of its own favorites page, similar to your Ford Off or BC side. Okay. And the name that you put in this banner is going to be what that's saved as. So you, if you wanted to search for it later, you know, if, if this was a 6.5 Creedmoor, I can put 6.5 Creedmoor uh, AR day one or whatever. And then I know yeah. that that's where that group came from. Okay. So we'll select that. Uh, you can tie it to a favorite. So if you have a favorites profile, like there's a 6.5 Creedmoor, I can tie it to that. Perfect. And what that does, you'll see bullet diameter here. When you tie it to a favorite, it pulls the bullet diameter from that favorite, so you don't have to select it. If you don't select a favorite, if you hit the little pencil, you'll get a drop down that has different bullet diameters or an option for other, and you can input whatever diameter you want. Okay. So we're going to need a distance to target. I hit the little deal there. This was a 100-yard group, so we'll just type in 100 yards, hit done, back. And now here's kind of where it starts getting important is your measurement points. Okay. So you want to make sure that you use pretty precise measurement points. And this is, again, where it comes into how tilted the, the sure. image that you took is. Yep. Because if you took a tilted image and you set your measurement points somewhere far away from your group, mm -hmm. it's not going to be as accurate. So try to use some measurement points that are close to the, the group location. Okay. So we'll, we've got it set at an inch here. That's fine. The group's about an inch. I like to make the reference about the size of the group. Just seems to give us a little bit more accurate results. Okay. So we got these two little pluses here. We're going to hit the, the left one, and we're going to add a point that's an inch. These are half-inch grids for the, the people watching. Okay, so you can zoom in on the target. Yep, so you can zoom in, and I'll, I can show with my fingers here. Yeah, you, you just, just kind of pinch, pinch it. it, and you can drag it. And then if you ever get lost, you can hit this little top icon and it centers you back up in your image. Okay. So you so can I'm, get a really finite, perfect yeah, and it, spot. And you can zoom way in there. So, okay. so we'll set one. Let's go right here. So I'm going to go for that little cross point and then it automatically pulls up the next marker. Yeah. And they're different colors. So you they're can different identify. colors so you can identify which one's which. There you go. I've added my, my inch reference marks. Now you're going to add a point of aim. So I aimed just right at the center of this target. Add that, pretty easy. And then you can start adding your impacts here at the bottom. So you just select impact and it just pulls up yep. the impact icon. And okay. you can actually change the colors of these impacts as well. So if, if you've got a target background that doesn't jive with the colors that are displayed, not a big deal. You can change those colors. Awesome. So now we're just going to go through and add it. You just line up your impact and then hit add. You betcha. Okay. Easy as that. And then you can also just select it, but sometimes you, you don't quite hit it on the money. Mm -hmm. If you do that, not a big deal. You can scroll down to the bottom and delete that impact three. Yep. So that one's gone. Now I can go back up and add in the correct location. 
and you you can see uh, I've got this little white X that's moving yeah, around. Right in the that's center, your yeah. average point of aim. So or as you add it, point of impact, yeah. correct? Sorry. Uh, so as you're adding those impacts, it'll calculate the average as you go and and oh, do that perfect. with you. So there, that's uh, telling you 100 yards, five shot group. We've got 0.86 inches. It tells you what that would be in MOA as well for the people that like to know their, their yeah. group in minutes. Uh, the WH is your width and height of the group. Okay. Uh, we've got mean radius in there. As, oh, we've as, been, yeah. <laughs> we've been talking about mean radius and there's been a bunch of people that'll email in and say, how do I calculate mean radius? Is there a calculator out there that I can use? And yeah. Now there is. Now there's one yep. right here. And then, uh, you've got your elevation and windage offset. So that is the distance from the point of aim to the mean point of impact. So that, that red dot or that red cross where you centered your, where you were aiming to that white dot that ref references that average point of impact. Wow. Concealed carry, personal protection, or home defense. Only the best will do. Critical defense ammunition. Developed to provide the best performance for personal protection, no matter what platform you choose. Delivering consistent, reliable performance. Every single time. When lives are on the line, only the best will do. Hornady Critical Defense Ammunition. So super simple. And for those of us, you know, uh, we're all, uh, you know, in this day and age, pretty tech savvy, it seems like. And if you're using Fordoff on your phone, uh, if you have a phone and you have apps on it, then you're tech savvy enough to use this. This oh, yeah. was very intuitive, very straightforward. Select uh, a few things. And then just start dropping icons on your bullet impacts and where you aimed, and the calculator does the rest. Yep, we tried to make this as easy to use as possible for a broad spectrum of users. Yep. And okay. then uh, another thing at the bottom, so you got, if you scroll down towards the bottom, you see your, your shot numbers. It'll mm -hmm. tell you a straight line distance from the point of aim to the uh, point of impact. Okay. And then it'll tell you your X, Y coordinates essentially in inches. I, I think it switches to centimeters if you're using metric. Oh, okay. I, I, I hadn't set it to metric. I, yeah. I probably should double check that. But yeah. nonetheless, it tells you your X, Y coordinates in inches here. So if you wanted to take this data and put it into an Excel sheet, go for it. It's there for you. But now that we've completed that, we'll hit this check mark at the top. And then there's what I talked about, it saves it just in a favorite. So if you want to know, Hey, what, what did that group do? You just click on it. There and it is. Bang. There's the info for you. That's super handy. And for, you know, a lot of us that just, uh, you know, Ford off and Ford off favorite aside that just shoot groups and, Oh, I, I'm going to try this bullet or yep. uh, this is my go-to load, but I ran out of powder and I couldn't get it. So I bought this powder and, uh, I, I want to document this. So in case I have to go back to it, you know, you can just yeah, Store you can these. just save it. Say this was, uh, you know, powder number one. Say this H4350. You shoot another group and you shot, I don't know, 4831 or something. Mm -hmm. You could take a picture of that and then you could just click on it, look at it, go to the other one, click on it, look at it, and then you got your comparison. Wow. So a couple takeaways from this. I mentioned it's simple. It's straightforward to use. Um, the big key, at least I, I, I feel is a key, if you can either take a photo with a tape measure or a ruler in it, or a target system that's got a grid. You know, we're, yep. the Hornady targets are the, the classic shoot and see style targets with the half inch grid. Yep. It makes it really easy because isolating those two points that are exactly an inch apart is critical for the calculator to work well. Yep. And I, I grabbed a, a caliper. So, you know, another good example of a, a reference distance that's just set oh, this could, to yeah. like two inches or something, something easy. You could just lay that down on the picture. And then you just take your photo with that in there. And instead of using the, the, grid the grid system, you would just drop your point right there and drop your second point yeah, right there. The jaws of the caliper. And just make sure that you tell it it's two inches. A caliper or tape measure is easy because mm -hmm. it, I mean, you can just read it right there. You're, you're at two, you're at zero. I kind of took a, a yeah. bad picture to show that, but. but no, the, the point is, yeah, just get something that you can yeah, verify. You, you got to have something that you can verify is a, is a, good reference distance. Otherwise your measurements are going to be all out of whack. Yeah. So this is, this is amazing just for the, the, you know, the, I'm going to call them the weekend shooter just to be able to document it and go, oh, okay, I shot this group at whatever range. I yeah. wonder, you know, what the, that was that a one MOA group? Was that, 
you know, 0.7 MOA yeah. or whatever. And now you just take a picture, drop your points in, and it'll tell you exactly what it is. Yep. And it, I mean, once you get a little practiced up with it, I, I shoot 20 shot groups a lot because obviously the your group yeah. size is too small podcast. So, you know, I've got an example here. We'll go through kind of how I use it to set zero angle. Yeah. In let's, a bit. let's, let's go through the, yeah, the next okay. step here. So there, technically there'd be two ways you could use this to set your zero angle. You could use the way that I just showed you, and then you could pull that up and you could type in these elevation and windage offsets manually. So okay. if, if you happen to not do it through your favorites profile, you can just pull that up and type it in. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's write those numbers down. Okay. It's going to be a lot of users, every single user at this point that has Ford off, that has favorite profiles, that is running zero angle. This feature hasn't been available, so they might have to yep. go back in. So now, uh, if you wanted to do this just to, to test it out, yep. um, you could go back, select one of your favorites. So we'll go into the 6.5 Creedmoor one, and we'll type in 100 yards, because that's the distance we're at. We'll go into Edit Rifle Info, and we'll find zero angle. So we've got. you want to really make sure that you've got all your inputs correct, correct here. So yeah. that's going to be a big thing on zero angle. A lot of people will say, hey, I've tried zero angle and it just, it doesn't seem to work out. Well, you've got to have all this stuff on the money. Otherwise yeah. you're, especially you're your wind be, speed and direction. Yep. Yeah, that it has a lot more effect than people seem to understand. So we'll say that we shot this on a calm day. There's zero mile an hour wind. I don't remember what it was when I shot that group, but uh, that's what we're going with. So down at the bottom, you've got impact height and impact location. Yep, and those are default to inches. Yep, if yep. you want to change that, you've got height and windage unit. You can select that. You can change it to whatever you want. But since we got inches displayed, I'm going to stick with inches. Yep. Uh, positive numbers are high. Negative numbers are low. Negative numbers are left. Positive is right. Okay. So just like a, a standard XY coordinate. Yep. So I wrote this down as 0. 0.83 inches high. So we'll type in 0. 0.83 right there. Go down to windage. We were 0. 0.52 right. So we'll just do 0.52, select done. You hit find zero angle and bang, there it is Bob's for you. Bob's your uncle. Yep. That simple. Awesome. And a, a kind of a, a added fact that a lot of people might not know about, you can check this that you typed it in right. So shot at 100 yards, I know that it's supposed to be 0.83 and 0.52 for your offsets. If you have all of your conditions that you shot it in set still on the HUD, you can click this little box in the bottom. And it'll show you here. So you got to take your wind out. Yep. Let's take this wind out. So 0.84, that's probably within the rounding error of, of the yep. calculation because it was 0.83. Yep. And then windage, we've got 0.53. So again, uh, I typed 0.52 in probably within rounding yeah. error. Yeah. We're talking hundredths of an inch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's pretty remarkable and a, and a good acid check there. Yep. I do this every time I set zero angle. I go back to the HUD and I click it and I make sure that the inputs I put in are popping out on the HUD because then I know I didn't mess anything up. Mm -hmm. And this, that's a big point of confusion, I think, for a lot of shooters who chase that wandering zero. Yeah. In, and I'll, I'll say this. There is some aspect of that that is uncorrectable because yeah. it has to do with light. And if you look through the glass on your scope, and it's 100 yards to the target, you can just hypothetically imagine that the air between you and the target is just another lens, yep. and it's got light in it. So there's a, some weird phenomena going on there. However, uh, having a parallax-free zeroing situation is critical, yep. and then knowing where that wind is and exactly what it is and from what direction. And if you account for that, your zero, Ford off will predict where your zero is going to be. Yeah in those wind conditions from day to day, week to week, month to month. Yep. That's why once you set zero angle properly, it's set until something changes your bullet or your velocity. Yep. Absolutely. You take your scope off. Yep. Perfect <laughs> example. Uh, I went to the, the PRS finale as a, as a sponsor. So I, you know, <laughs> I, I, I didn't earn my way there, which it, that's cool. It's a great experience to shoot with all those guys, but I, I shot my two, two, three in tack class and they had uh they had the opportunity to to zero and check all your dope at range and I I didn't my zero angle was set I shot that gun at another match a, a month or two before all of my load information was the same so I I left the gun in the truck and I I shot pretty well for for me I shot pretty dang good at the match yeah all of my dope was dead on I didn't have any issues with with uh 
like elevation or zero, nothing. It, it was just dead money because I had, I set my zero angle right. That's all there is to it. That's awesome. Yeah, math works. Yeah, and it's uh, funny it, how that is. Yeah, zero <laughs> angle is is one of those times that yeah, if you do it right, it just works. Yep. And it, I'll be honest with you, when we first kind of released that zero angle feature in Ford off, I was I ran two profiles. I cloned yep. it and I ran one with zero angle, one with not. I I did the same thing. And now I don't even think about it. Yep. I when I first came out to Hornet Eden, we had zero angle available. I, I did the same thing. I had a, a zero range and a zero angle set. And if stuff started seeing, you know, funky yeah. elevation differences, or whatever, I'd switch to my zero range one. But now that I know how to properly set that up, I know if there's something wrong with my dope, it's probably I measured my velocity poorly. I didn't shoot enough shots to get a, a get proper zero, zero angle on, mm-hmm. or I need to adjust my form factor a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's, those are, yeah. Usually the nut behind the bolt. Usually yeah. it's, it's not the bolt. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So let's, let's move on here. That's, okay. that's a, a great way to use uh target analysis for just kind of your, your first, Oh, I got this five shot group. What is it? Yep. Um, let's transition into maybe bigger shot groups or how okay. the preferred way to set up your zero angle, whichever yeah. you would like. So, uh, yeah, we can talk about that a little bit. So I've got a, a pretty decent example here. Uh, it's, target where I've got a couple different groups on it. These are all at different distances. This top left one was a hundred yard, which I mean, that's a, that's a little, that's a zinger. Thing. Yeah, man. That was my six GT match gun at a hundred yards. So this is a good example of when it might be kind of tough to use group analysis. Cause these things are just clustered up. You're yeah. going to have a really hard time distinguishing what bullet is what. Mm-hmm. So personally, I like to shoot my zero angle at two or 300 yards because those shots are going to have a little more dispersion. You'll get more resolution on placing those just within the app. And generally, like, you can see this group here is a 10-shotter at 300. You can see where every one yeah. of those went. That's a pretty remarkable 10-shot group. That's a pretty dang for, good 10-shot group, too, yeah. Jacob laying down with a sandbag and a yep. bipod. Yeah, I don't remember how what the wind conditions that day were, but I... Either way, that's a that's a pretty good group. Six GT with yep. one tens and Varget. It's the recipe for success. Yeah, obviously. Yep. Load it, not over pressure, and it's going to shoot pretty dang good. Yeah. So here I've got a a little better example. This was a three hundred yard group. I've got nineteen shots here. I shot one shot at steel, and then I shot on paper just to verify that it'd be on the paper. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I started doing about this time is at the bottom I wrote all of my conditions down, which. I wouldn't have to with group analysis. I can write that in the title. Mm-hmm. So if I wanted to remember, hey, it was an eight mile an hour wind from 230 degrees. I don't have to write it on here. I can put it on the title. Yeah. But that's what I did at the time. So that's why it's going to be a good example of how I use zero angle. So this was a, we'll go over to the 6GT. I, I just kind of whipped this up quick from data that I had before. This set 302 yards to be exact. Which and is important to be exact. Yes, it's, it is. it's important to be exact. I mean, one or two yards, not going to kill you, but if, if you can be, you be more be. accurate. Yep. yep. Uh, I had a six to 10 mile an hour wind here. I put an eight in for kind of the average and it was at a 220. All right. So here's how you set zero angle within the app. You'll okay. go to edit rifle info. So you're in the HUD. You've got your solution for 300 yards in yep. that wind condition with a, a a, a kind of a generic hundred yard zero, yep. let's say. Yep. And I, I've got, uh, all of the atmospheric conditions set in there too, from the day also, I've, I've got that written yeah. in. So it's going to be like, yeah. this is what I did the day I set zero angle for this gun. Okay. So go back to edit rifle info. We'll toggle over to zero angle and we'll hit that fine zero angle. So I'm going to scroll through and make sure everything's set. So like right here, a hundred yards. Well, I shot at three Oh two. So we need to make sure that's good. All of that stuff. Is looking pretty good. So now I don't have to manually type this in. I can hit measure impact location and it'll take you through group analysis. So you see it right just here. popped up right so there. So your first option when you're presented with the three ways right there yep. is measure impact location is your first one. Yep. That will take you right to group analysis. Yep. And then the bottom option is find zero angle. And that's the traditional method that we've used before. So we'll hit measure impact location here, okay. and that's going to take you to group analysis. And it's the same exact process. Nothing changed here. We'll take a photo. We'll try to, maybe I'll take it a little crooked here just so we can use that rotate feature. So I'm going to rotate this out to. That's nice that it's in a half the, of a degree. Yeah. So we tried it with one degree, but it was a little too coarse. Yep. So there we got it nice and square. And 
So I guess I kind of forgot to mention why you want it square. If you've got it angled a little bit, so your group would be up here. Oh, but sure. But the, the app doesn't know that you didn't take it square, so your elevation and windage offset are going to be a little yep. different. So that's why it needs to be square. Very and important. Also, make your make your targets square too and level, because yeah. if your target's not level and then you you take this and have a square picture, then like... You yeah. just did the same thing, only it looks level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, hang up your targets square as well. Yeah. All right. So, that looks pretty good there. That's fine. So, this is about a three-inch group. So, I'm going to use three inches for my measurement point. As you can see here, it already knows I'm in my 6GT favorite profile. It already knows the bullet diameter. And your target and the, and the yards. That stuff all got pulled from the set zero angle stuff and your favorites profile. Perfect. Uh, we'll skip over title. just to kind of move this along here. Uh, group's about three inches. I'm going to use three inches yeah. here for it. Now, you could use just one inch if you wanted. You could, yeah. but okay. uh, I've noticed the, the resolution's a little bit better. And, I mean, we're talking hundredths of an inch, yeah. not not like tenths, Yeah. If, if you set it about the size of the group size. Okay. So, three inches. we got a half-inch grid again, so we'll set one right there. Set the other right there. we got... Let's see, one, two, three, yep. All right, point of aim. A little windy that day. I was off a little bit. We'll set that where I was aiming. Now we'll get to the impact points, and I'll just kind of try to blast through this yeah. quick. This is going to allow the user, you know, because we've been preaching a lot and not preaching, you know, like I said, we said this too. We said, we're not telling you what to do. We're telling yep. you what we do. And Absolutely, yeah. one of the things we've been really uh, doing as a group, as a ballistic development group, and just as you know, the group of us competitors here at Hornady is shooting larger groups to achieve your zero. Yep. It used to be a three or five shot group. Well, now it's 10 to 20, sometimes more than that. Uh, usually I'll shoot a 20 shotter uh, and then calculate my zero angle off that. This is going to make shooting, let's say a 10 to 20 shot group to achieve your zero that much easier, yeah. way less labor intensive, and then you, you're going to get a better, more accurate, quote-unquote, zero for your rifle. You're going to hit your target on that first shot more often. Yep. You're going to get better solutions out of the gate more often when you shoot a 20-shot zero. This is just, just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, we learn as we do this stuff, too. As you said, we used to shoot the three- and five-shot group set in our zero. But, you know, how many times have you done that, gone to a match, and you shoot another group at the match and go, huh? About two tenths off of what I thought it should have been. Yeah, guess I'll knock a tenth off all my elevation yeah. and everything five hundred and on. Yeah, you and then know. you get halfway through the match, like, what in the heck? Why yeah. am I missing these targets? Yeah. Well, you just messed with your zero, dummy. Yeah, off of three shots. <laughs> yep. So this is going to make shooting those larger zero samples just that much easier to do. Yep. Love it. And you could, you know, you could do this over a composite group too. Yeah. Yeah, that's yep. pretty pretty handy. So there I've got gone through everything. I've got a 3.1 inch group, which is just under a minute at 302. It's pretty dang good. Especially Holy in those wind conditions. Yep. So here it it just brought all those offsets in. It looked like uh, 0.81 high and 4.1 right, or 4.01, sorry. Yep. So the reason I'm writing these down is because I shot at 300 yards. I have a 100 yard zero. So the app thinks that I've got my, my turrets are at zero, zero doing this. So this is kind of where it gets a little complicated, but it's just the, the nature yeah. of the beast if you're sighting in at a little farther distances. Yep. I had a mill dialed into my turret here. So that's where, that's where it's going to get a little bit of math here, but it's not bad. So I had a mill dialed into my turret. So I should have hit a mill low. A mill at 300 yards is... You know, 3.6 times 3, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I think I think I did 302. It's 10.87 is how low I should have had this group. So I'm going to manually make this 10.87 inches lower. So I've got 0 0.81, and it was high point, or sorry, 0 0.81 high of 10.87. So I'm going to make this minus 9 point, what would that be, 9.6 for... My elevate, oop, that needs to be negative. And again, this is just how I do it. This, mm -hmm. you know, I did it at 300 yards. I want to keep that 100 yard zero just because it's convenient. Right. 
So I need to, I need to account for what I dialed into my turret. I mean, you could totally just set a dot up at, you know, not touch your turrets, shoot a group, and it's going to be a mill low or, or whatever your gun's going to be mm -hmm. and have that raw value if you want. But I, I just find it convenient to just dial what the distance should be, shoot the group, and go from there. And then I didn't dial any windage, so the windage is fine. So now I'm going to hit find zero angle. And we'll save it because it got all that from me. Mm -hmm. And now we're, so we're 9.96 inches low. So that's, you know, 10.86 minus the, the yeah. offset. Perfect. So right what it should be. And we're a little left, or we need to, to come left four inches. Four. Just wow. like that. Perfect. And that allows you to shoot further away for your zero to have uh, a, a better picture at what your actual dispersion looks like. Yep. And it's going to be easier to measure because you're not shooting a little little bug hole. Yeah. Uh, and then you just back calculate it out, set yep. your zero at 100, and now you have an awesome zero angle that will that will work for that rifle and ammo combination anywhere in the world, any day of the week. Yeah. Yep. And the, again, the reason I like to do it that way is at 300 yards, I can see every one of these bullet holes. Mm -hmm. If I shot a 20 shot group at 100 yards, good luck. Yeah. Like you're going to be guessing. Yeah. So, you know, another method that we teach a lot of people is shoot four fives. So we've got four fives here. You would just do group analysis for analysis for each one of these five shot groups. And then you would average your average point of impacts. So yep. it's, again, it's a little math involved, yep. but I mean, anybody can punch the average offset yeah. into a calculator and, and get your point of impacts there. So that's another good way to do it. Cause five shot groups, you can usually see all five bolts at a hundred yards. Yep. So yep. just kind of pick your poison, but I recommend at least a 15 or 20 shot group to get like a, your nuts on zero angle. Cause that stuff can, it can wander about a 10th when you get under 10 shots. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a super good piece of information right there. So you've got, okay, most people are going to shoot a five shot group, let's say. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can expect that five shot group size to be, you know, what was it? 30 to 40% bigger and smaller. Yeah. Plus it's going, the, the mean point of impact is going to wander. Yeah. I mean, just, just look at this thing right here. We've got, you know, about the mean point of impact is, uh, well, well, well I guess we got it right here. Eight tenths high and half an inch, right? Yep. Well, this one is an eight tenths high. That's about a half inch high and a half inch, right? Well, then this one is not really right at all. That's about a, you know, a 10th of an inch, right? And then an inch and a quarter high. Mm -hmm. That was all, it's all the same gun same ammo it was an ar so that's yeah. why the groups are a little bit higher dispersion but like all those are different but nothing yeah. changed i shot all these i think i shot five shots five shots grabbed a different gun tested it let that barrel cool and then five shots five shots like there's there's nothing different about these yep today's episode is brought to you by hornady security rapid safes using patented rfid technology you get the quickest, most dependable access to your firearm when you need it the most. Check out the full Rapid Safe line at HornadySecurity.com. That's that's pretty pretty interesting. And again, those those more shots you're gonna get, it seems like oh, do I really need to shoot twenty shots for a zero? It depends on it, what you're doing. Yeah. If you're a competitor or if you're setting a rifle up that you want to hit something far away every single time you get that gun out of the case shoot a little bit more at the beginning yep. to get that zero angle set properly so you don't have to shoot as much chasing your tail later on. It's yeah. as simple as that. Yeah, I think Jaden has, has worded it the best that I've heard so far is, would you rather want to shoot 20 shots and get everything set up right up front? Or would you rather base everything off of a five shot group and then start shooting steel or, or whatever and start scratching your head going, huh? stuff is not lining up and now you got to go back to 100 yards and figure yeah. out where did i go wrong or well, i'd rather just shoot yeah. 20 up front and then be done with everything's it. good to go all the way out to you know 1200 yards whatever distance you're shooting on yeah you know, i might have to tweak form factor a little bit but well you bring up form factor i've seen this happen yep. uh, where somebody will do a five shot zero and they'll run zero range then they'll go back out on the range on a different day so their zero range is obviously different now yep and they'll start shooting and, oh, I'm not hitting exactly where I'm aiming at. I must have to adjust my axial form factor. So now they're adjusting their axial form factor, creating errors yep. that at the moment helps them hit what they're aiming at in the center. Yep. But the next day, it's not going to be the same yeah. because their zero is, is the root cause of the problem. So 
setting up a 20 shot, let's say zero angle yep. will save you from inputting future errors into your solution. Absolutely. Yeah. That seems, uh, it seems easy to justify. Just take the time, do it right. Yep. And, uh, you know, for, for those of those guys that are shooting different bullets and swapping scopes around all the time and yep. not really being serious as far as competitions go or whatever. Yeah. Then maybe you don't need to shoot a 20 shot zero every yep. time because you don't, you're not going to benefit from it. But yeah. for the serious hunter, the serious long range shooter, the serious competitor, it, there's no reason not to do it. Oh yeah. Yep. I mean, 20 shots is a drop in the bucket. You're going to go below 300 shots at a match. Mm-hmm. Like what are you really losing by loading an extra 20 up and just getting everything set out of the way up front? Yep. Awesome. And this, this is just one of the keys. I mean, having a good zero, having a good muzzle velocity and having a good form factor. Like if you have those things set, Anything left is all you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the beautiful part is once you set those three critical elements, and, and you know everything you put into Ford Off is critical, yep. once you have those set, they're good to go. You don't have to go back through yeah. and re-quote-unquote true like you see other folks doing with uh, yep. DC-based calculators. And for me, that is worth its weight because oh, we yeah. don't have time to be doing that. No, no. And, it's so much easier to set the lab radar up, get my muzzle velocity while I do this. Mm-hmm. No. I'm shooting a 20 shot group. I might as well get a good muzzle velocity yeah, with those same them. 20 shots. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the only thing you got to figure out is form factor. The best way to do that, just shoot some uh, over distance. Well, the best way to do that is with a radar. But <laughs> yeah. Not we, everybody's got a big radar to, to tell you what your 800 yard velocity is to set that. So, no. you know, go set up a, a plate at 800 and shoot a group and adjust it from there. And then uh, another kind of uh, troubleshooting is. If your dope is a linear uh, amount of off, so if you're shooting at 200 yards, your 10th high, you shoot at 800 yards, your 10th high, don't adjust form factor. That's a zero issue. Yeah. If your dope is one tenth off at 300, maybe three tenths off at 800, four or five tenths off at 1,000, that's either muzzle velocity or form factor. Like those are, those are your problems. And did you mus- measure your muzzle velocity? Yes. Well, then that's not the yeah. problem. How many shots and yeah. was it? Can you trust it? Yep. And yeah, that we talked about that in our Ford off podcast. Don't play around with your muzzle <laughs> velocity yeah. trying to make your trajectory solution line up. If you trust lab radar or yep. magneto speed, Doppler radar, or big Doppler radar, if you trust your muzzle velocity and it's on a good string of shots, yep. don't play around with that because that's just going to create problems, especially if you're running a BC-based calculator, which uh, yeah, the BCs are dependent on temperature and, yep. and velocity. And you're telling it that it's at a velocity that it's actually not. Yeah. Don't Um, lie to it, especially if you measured it. Don't lie to it. Yep. Awesome. Well, this is a super useful feature and, you know, there's a bunch of different ways to use it. The way that you described your zero angle process, it's probably not going to be for everybody. I think a lot of folks are going to gravitate towards, I shot a group at a hundred, whether that be 10 or 20 shots or whatever. And they, you know, picking their points out and they set it up that way, but doing it at a little bit further range, two or 300 yards where you can see every individual impact, uh, and then just subtracting that, uh, offset from what you dialed onto your scope is, uh, not that complex and allows you just to get the, again, the resolution is just going to be a little bit higher. Yep. And I mean, if you, if people have questions on, you know, could you go over that again or, or whatever, shoot us an email. I'll, I'll try to respond and and be a little bit more, uh, in depth on the explanation because it, I mean, this, I'm pretty excited about group analysis. I've been working on it for a while. You have, yeah. It's, it's like my first big project since I kind of hopped on the uh, the the ballistician side of things, and and like I'll do everything I can for people to to like it because it yeah. it's awesome. You just kind of have to figure out how to use it. Yeah. Well, and, and it, you did a great job because it's not that complex. It's very intuitive, and it just allows people. It allows the weekend shooter just to capture a group and say, "Oh, I shot a point four MOA group." Yeah. How many oh. people like just Sending it to your buddies, which by yeah. the way, you can share it the same way that you, if you want to share a photo off profile, you have that little share out icon. Yep. Only it doesn't send the QR code. It sends you that, that, that snippet. That, yeah. We'll go over to it here. So if I wanted to share this group to you, Seth, I would, I would hit the share button and, and send that to you and it'd show you exactly what the screen is right now. And I'd say, oh yeah, you think you're going to, yeah. think you're going to beat me at this match? Well, beat this buddy. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, uh, well done with the, the group analysis feature. Again, there's going to be a bunch of people use it several different ways, but it's just another tool to your arsenal. And, you know, 
it's four dollars and ninety nine cents, which yeah. in the grand scheme of things, comparatively, is not a very expensive uh, four off or excuse me, not an expensive calculator because the calculator's free. Yeah, uh, we've got to try to recoup some money because this project has cost us a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it is a usable feature, and it, it, not everybody needs it. But for those of those yep. that want it, it's there. It's useful, and yeah, I've been using the heck out of it the last couple of days. Uh, just playing around, getting familiar with it because it's just now live. Yeah, launched just last, last week. weekend. Yeah. Yep. So if you're listening to this podcast, you can get the group analysis feature on Ford off right now. Yep. Awesome, J- Jacob. Anything else you want to leave the listener with regarding zero angle, regarding group analysis, Ford off shooting in general? Man, I don't know. That's a pretty broad topic. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, there's I so can't much. really think of anything right now. Anyways, was, it's a loaded question because between you and Jaden, there's so much that you guys work on that you can't tell anybody about. Anyway, yeah, so. yeah. Th- there's uh, there's a lot of cool things that we can do with this too to expand it, and I I really hope that we can. Mm-hmm. But you know, as it goes, stuff costs time and money, and yeah. other priorities happen. So we'll see. Maybe. Maybe we can make it cooler. Maybe there'll be some other things to the app that come out that are cool. That sounds, Who knows? Yeah, that sounds like a, a tip of the hat. And uh, we appreciate all that you're doing for us, especially on the Ford Off side. Anything else? No, it's a pleasure. I mean, this is, as you said, a passion project for many of us here. So we're just happy that it, it's live and people can use it. Awesome. Everybody out there, this is an awesome feature. Jacob did a great job with this one. Go out there. Get the group analysis feature and then give us some feedback. Let us know what you like or don't like. Uh, we want to hear about it and we want to make this calculator something that you use uh, intuitively and without even thinking. You just go to Ford Off because it is, it is the answer. So reach out to us at podcast at hornady.com. We'd love to hear you, uh, especially how you like this. You can drop a comment right here on YouTube. If you're active on the Modern Day Sniper Network, uh, we're semi-active on the Hornady Hub there. Reach out to us. Let us know what you think. Subscribe, like, comment, share, all the things. We appreciate it. We'll catch you on the next one.